How to speak loudly on stage. Yeah, this is a cool one to talk about because you've probably been there and done that where I've been in the same type of situation, you know? Maybe you're in a, a place where the sound system is awful or the sound system stops working. Maybe there's rain coming down on a metal roof and you're outside having to speak. How do you speak loudly on stage? Oh, that's a tough one, right? Well, actually I actually have 10 very cool tips to help you do the same. I'm Jason Hewlett, Hall of Fame speaker. I'm excited to dive right in with you. Have you ever watched a speaker stand on stage and just captivate the audience with their loud and booming voice? Well, obviously you see that I don't have necessarily a loud and booming voice, but I can get there if I need to, especially because of these tips and tricks I'm gonna teach you. You may know some of these and some may be brand new, and that's what I'm excited to share with you. So let's go for it, here we go. And before I begin, I wanna just remind you that as a speaker, as a leader, there are gonna be times when you are going to need that louder voice. And it's gonna be interesting. It could be on a Zoom call. It could be in a very small meeting. But it might also be in an arena or some place where having to use a loud voice is going to be necessary. So all of these tricks and tips are gonna help you in every capacity as a leader and speaker. Number one, embrace vocal warm-ups. Have you done vocal warm-ups before? If you've been into singing, then you probably have, but a lot of speakers don't take the time or the energy to do it. Vocal warm-ups are really important, not only for your mouth to get stretched out, but also to move your tongue. There's a trill. You can do some tongue twisters like Unique New York, Unique New York. Or you can do some vocal warm ups that I did on the way to recording this video. Yes, before I got to this wonderful location, which it looks like my office. I wish my office was this nice. <laughs> but as I was driving here, I was going, you hear what I'm doing? I'm just warming up my voice. Vocal exercises are essential to making it so that you can speak as loudly as you possibly need to, depending on what's going on in that sound system and situation. So what are your vocal warm-ups? Or are they or are they I do lots of other videos on this channel about that specifically if you want to check them out. Number two is to harness the power of breath control and figuring out actually how you're breathing. So when I say that, you're probably like, oh, I'm actually not breathing. <laughs> I think most of the time when you're sitting watching a video, you're just like barely breathing at all. So when you're about ready to speak, really get into the breath. Get to the point where it's not just coming from the lungs, but it's coming from the diaphragm, pushing from the stomach, and able to take in a lot of oxygen. <sighs> Breathing allows for that opening in the vocal cords, in the vocal chambers, in the throat, through the lungs, through the whole body to get your voice to be able to come out at a different resonance. It's a powerful thing to be able to do this, but breathing is of the essence. That is like the pedal to pushing the car to go. <laughs> and so having enough breath and able to make your voice louder is dependent upon the way that you squeeze your breath out through the diaphragm and through the belly. Some of the best ways to do this is through breathing techniques. <laughs> and then you could also fill up your belly all the way. And then push it all the way out till it's gone. Practice some of these things. You could do the Wim Hof method if that's something you like as well. Some cool breathing techniques out there to check out. Number three is to utilize strategic body language. Now think about as I'm sitting here, I could be sitting here like this and I could just be like, you know, crouched over. That's probably not the right body language, is it? I need to sit back, I need to sit upright. And whether you're sitting or you're speaking, think about your posture. Think about where your body is aligned. Think about your shoulders, are they back? What are you doing with your body while you're speaking? That allows you to speak louder, the better the cavity of your body is able to project this sound. But you don't want to be scrunched up. You don't want to be too laid back 
but you want to be able to make it so that your body is a great instrument. And what that means is yes, work your body out, take the time to exercise, do the right things for your body, that'll allow you to project all the better when you're on stage. It also gives you something to work for in terms of your confidence. I want you to think about your posture, the way that you show up, the way that your body is going to actually give you more of a confidence in terms of your posture and walking tall with your head straight and your neck straight and walking out there knowing that you have something to share with everybody and equally can project as loud as you need to with your great, incredible body and posture. Number four is to master the art of inflection. Yeah, what is inflection? When I've spoken or taught people how to speak in an arena, an arena is really tricky because even if they have those big line array sound systems that hang from the ceiling, which are awesome, you still have to cut through the sound because the arena is so large or the large convention hall space. And so when it comes to voice inflection, this really matters because when I've taught MCs at stadiums and arenas of sporting events, I have to say to them, look, you can't just say things like, hey everybody, we're gonna have a great time tonight. Thank you for being here. You need to inflect your voice. So be like, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a great time tonight. This is voice inflection. That's giving the words a little bit more power as they come through. Are you ready to have a great time tonight? You still want it to sound like you're a human, but you also need to use voice inflection. So think about that the next time you're in a big space where you do need to still speak loudly, even if they have a great, great sound system. Now number five is to leverage vocal resonance. We've already talked about vocal warmups, but the importance of vocal resonance is to make it so that your voice is coming through with as much power as it possibly can. That means you're using your voice in the right way. Now, this is not an exhausting thing to do. In fact, even though you're pushing, this allows you to say something much more clearly and allows the audience to feel of the resonance of what you're saying. When we hear a resonant voice, it really speaks to our soul. It kind of rattles us a little bit and then it allows us to feel kind of a comfort blanket. You've probably heard a voice that's a little bit tinny and it's hard to listen to. Those types of voices are difficult. Even my own speaking voice can be difficult. And so for a presentation or a video, anything that I do, I have to consider how resonant I'm going to speak with my voice that day. But I have to make that full choice. And it is a commitment to speaking at a different resonance and level for the audience to truly believe that I believe what I'm saying. Choose your vocal resonance. Number six is to pace your speech effectively. Think about a speaker who speaks way too fast. Oh yeah, you love it when they speak fast, don't you? Oh, but what about when they speak too slowly? That's not enough. Well, what about both? What if you emphasized a point a little bit quickly and then other times you slow it down? It's good to have some speech difference, some change in the tonality and some change in the speed. And when it comes to utilizing your voice effectively in a loud way, this is essential in order to do this. Number seven is to eliminate vocal tension. The best way to do that is to stretch your mouth. Release your tension in your neck. You can even massage your throat. Have you ever thought about that? Oh yeah. Some vocal coaches even encourage you to grab this right here and pull it down. <laughs> I don't like doing that, but you can. It's not something I recommend, so you probably want to hire a vocal coach to teach you how to do some of those things. But in order to release the vocal tension, move your neck, move your shoulders, move your body. It allows you to speak loudly, but it also gives you the chance to relax when you speak in that loud tone. Let's talk about number eight, the power of the pause and eye contact. A lot of speakers don't realize that when you're speaking loudly, you need to pause at the right times for the audience to hear it because the sound is changing so different in a big space. And you know who does this the best? Basketball coaches in a loud arena. Think about it. There's the band that's playing. There might be other background music. People are cheering and clapping and screaming. Lots going on. The coach needs to look at the players they're talking to and speak loudly enough for them to understand what they want them to know before they go out on to the basketball court and perform. When coaches do this, I found it really interesting. 
there are some coaches that lose their voices really rapidly, and that is obvious as to why that would happen. They're screaming for an entire game. But when it comes to speaking with pauses and eye contact, that allows the listener to understand, oh yes, they're talking to me, I got it. So when you're speaking to an arena full of people, choose a section of people, choose a grouping of people to talk to and speak loudly, but pause and allow them to consume what you've said. Number nine is to amplify your microphone technique. Here's the way you do this. Whenever I teach speakers to speak in a loud space, I say you need to eat the mic. That means get as close as you can to it. The microphone can't do its job if it's out here. And it really is tough for the sound engineers to figure out what to do when your microphone's too far out. If you have a lavalier like this one, this lavalier is really helpful because it's capturing my voice right here. But if I'm holding the mic out here at a stage event, that's going to be tough for my sound engineers and for the audience to hear. So I say, eat the mic. If you think about it, if you've ever watched boxing or MMA, any of these fighting events, what do they do? The microphone comes down from the ceiling, they grab the mic and they go, let's get ready to rumble. Now, that's exaggerated, but that's exactly what they do. They're leaning into certain consonants or vowels. Oh, let's get ready to rumble. They're eating the mic. They're letting the words unfold. It's rolling out. And so when you speak and allow the mic to amplify your words, it's gonna change everything. And your voice is gonna thank you, even if you have to speak loudly. Finally, I'd like you to practice and consider refinement and all of the good things that come with recording yourself. Try to speak louder on stage once in a while and see if it's a better fit for your audience. But as you saw when I raised my voice right there, I had to slow it down. I have to pause a bit more. I have to inflect my voice. I have to use all the different techniques I've just shared with you, which we've just done 10. I hope that it's been helpful. And here's what I want you to do, if you will. As you record yourself, as you watch back and listen back to yourself, think about the different techniques you can utilize. What I'd love for you to do is comment below. Comment which one of these techniques you're gonna try next. And also comment which ones you have tried. I will respond to every comment. And if you have any questions, please let me know. But I'd love it if you also like and subscribe while you're at it. Thanks for joining me. I'm excited for you to speak loudly on stage.